Today, we have a very special guest. We have Katie Geddes, who is a fairly new TPT seller. She's been selling for about a year, and she's going to be talking about her unique journey on TPT and that she started hiring help in the very beginning of her TPT journey. And she's going to be sharing how she believes it has impacted the overall success of her store and how this can actually be something that's affordable for a lot of TPT sellers in the beginning. I know most TPT sellers are still in the classroom, and when you're trying to juggle all of the things, it really does make a world of difference to have an extra set of hands, even if it's just for a couple of hours a week. And she talks about how that is absolutely possible. So if you've ever been interested in hiring someone to help you along your TPT journey, whether it's hiring someone to help make covers or previews for you or answer emails or things like that, then stick around. You're really going to enjoy this. She's going to share everything from her hiring process down to how she makes this work on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think you're really going to enjoy this conversation. Hey, Katie, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Lauren? Good. I am so excited for our chat today to talk about your unique and kind of different TPT journey. Because you started out a lot differently than most, which is what we're going to be talking about today. But why don't you start with just telling everybody a little bit about you, how long you've been selling on TPT? Sure. So I've been on TPT for just over a year now. I've been wanting to start a store, of course, for forever, but really put it off just because of you know, other priorities, but I, uh, I was originally a classroom elementary music teacher and I taught just for two years in the classroom from 2016 to 2018. But then I had a bit of kind of a quarter life crisis. I quit my job, moved abroad for a couple of years, came back during the pandemic and I actually started teaching on OutSchool, which is like a company where you like make your own classes and teach there. And I taught there or I've been teaching online there full time now for over two years. And so TPT kind of came along with it because I was making all of these products for my classroom, yes, but more so it turned out to be my out school classroom. And so I thought for a while there, I was like, all these products are sitting around kind of doing nothing, like should be up being sold somewhere. And so about a year ago, which was September of 2021, I finally pulled the plaque and I was like, all right, I need to do something about this. And I finally started my store. So I love yeah. it. Awesome. Okay. So you've been doing this for about a year, um, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So about a year. So that kind of leads into what we're going to be talking about today. And that is you started your store differently than most people do. So can you, can you talk yeah. to us a little bit about that? Yeah, of course. I think that I can relate to a lot of classroom teachers in a way because TPT was kind of a secondary thing for me. I was teaching full time online and I didn't necessarily have the time or the energy to get my store put together. And I also didn't I didn't know anything about TPT. Like I didn't know, you know, the ins and outs. I didn't know how everything worked. So I decided to hire on help to get myself started. I know a lot of people as they grow their TPT store, they decide, you know, down the road to hire a virtual assistant or something like that. Like once they start to see it pick up, they started to see some success. But I just knew from this start that I really wouldn't have been able to start my store if I hadn't hired someone on to get me started. So that's what I did. Yeah. So you told me this and I was just immediately intrigued because I love the whole idea of this, recognizing that you don't have the time to do all of the things that you either need to do or would like to do in your TPT business. And sometimes it's not even just the matter of time, it's the mental energy as well. Right. And so just from the very beginning, having that mindset of this is a business and businesses often hire people or they hire help. So I want to start by prefacing this conversation. And I think that you would probably really agree with me on this, that Obviously, hiring a VA in the very beginning is not something that everybody can do, right? So I want to acknowledge that. But at the same time, I think it's such a cool journey because I think that there are so many people who think that it's not possible for them to hire yeah. out in the early stages. And so I'm really excited for you to share your story and share your experience. And hopefully if someone's been kind of thinking about doing this, then that'll be kind of the, the little nudge that they need to like push them to go ahead and make that step. So Let's start here. Like you were at the very beginning, had you already started creating resources for TBT? At what point, where were you at when you were like, yeah, okay, I can't do all of this? 
Yeah. So I have been developing like a curriculum for my online classes for a while. So I had slides and workbooks for kind of like a level one, level two, level three curriculum for both guitar and ukulele. That So yes, yeah, so I had products created already that were just kind of sitting there. And that's, I guess, what got me moving because, and that's why I was able to grow pretty quickly on the platform too, because I, the product creation, of course, like takes a lot of time. Yeah. And that is something that's a little bit harder to outsource to someone because, you know, you have your own style, you know, you have your own, obviously the way that you would go about teaching things. And so that, of course, is reflected in your products a lot. But I knew that once I got them up there, I knew that those were basically sales that I was missing out on. So for me, yeah. the, the way that I kind of saw it was, yes, I'm going to make this investment up front, but it's going to be a win in the long run. And I'm going to make that back. Like I just had that kind of mindset difference, which I know can be kind of a foreign mindset in a way yeah. for some teachers. But I just, I don't know, I just believed in myself and I knew that I had seen other teachers do it and that it was possible for myself as well. Um, so I knew that I... I didn't necessarily need to hire someone to create the products for me, but I just needed someone to like package them up, make the covers, make the previews, get the store started, like make the banner. Like I didn't know how to do any of that stuff. And I also didn't necessarily want to take the time to learn how to do it in the beginning because I don't know, I just, I was busy, you know, every teacher is busy. And so I just thought that that would be a smart short-term investment to make in the beginning just to get them up and start like making that passive income from the beginning. All right. So we're going to, there's a whole lot there. So we're going to unwrap a lot of what you said here in just a minute so that nobody thinks that we're skipping over it. We're going to talk about what all your VA does for you and how, if you didn't want to do it yourself, like how did you teach them to do that? We're going to, we're going to get into all of that in a second, but let's start with this because I feel like a cost is obviously the biggest hurdle for most people when we're talking about hiring a virtual assistant. Can, can we talk about for a second, um, because you hire out in the Philippines, which I do as well. And I've talked about this on here. My virtual assistant is in the Philippines and we hire through onlinejobs.ph. That is, honestly, I've heard people that don't appreciate that. They think like, nope, you don't do that. You know, whatever. That's, if it's our business. We get to run our business the way that we want to run our business. And that's, I'm very common in the TPT world and also just in the online business world in general, the yeah. hire outside the US. But... About how much are we talking when we're talking about hiring in the Philippines? About how much are we talking there? Yeah, it, there's, it's a bit of a range depending on, you know, how experienced they are because being a virtual assistant in the Philippines is incredibly common. It's a really common job for them because they know that there is a high need for it, especially in the U.S. and just Western countries in general. So I would say that the range usually is between 4 to $8 an hour. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people I know hire on, honestly, the lower end of that. And mine is a little bit more in the middle slash towards the higher end of that. But I did that because my VA is just really perfect for me in general, because he's actually a musician. He plays guitar. And so it's like he was pretty much a diamond in the road. I like had to hire him, you know, so yeah. um, I was willing to kind of pay a little bit more than most people, I guess, in that aspect. But yeah, the, I would say between four to eight dollars an hour which of course is like extremely affordable for, for sellers. Absolutely. And if you're talking about hiring inside the U.S., like in general, you're looking at 20 to $30 an hour, just depending on what the task is. So there's obviously, there's a huge difference in what you're paying. And, and I'm going to say though, that when you're talking about hiring a TPT virtual assistant, like specifically somebody who's familiar with the TPT world, obviously there's going to be, or there should be, a lot less training that's taking place. You should expect to get more bang for your buck. There should be more getting done within that hour that they're working or within that time frame that they're working. So I'm not going to say that it offsets. It doesn't. Like it's still going to be less expensive to hire inside of the Philippines. But at the same time, we're looking at a small amount of money. And I think that's what I wanted people to hear is that we're not looking at having to spend, you know, 500 to, you know, two, three thousand dollars a month in order to get help inside of your business. You can start with hiring somebody part time, you know, very part time even, and you can pay them a little bit of money. They set their own salary on onlinejobs.ph. I'm starting to sound like I'm a rep for them, but I am absolutely not. No, I mean, they it's said, very yeah. helpful. Yeah, they set their own salary and it is, it, you just go and you look and you try to find somebody who's going to be a good fit for you. And you look at what their 
asking for, like what their hours they're asking for and how much they're they're wanting to get paid. So for example, my virtual assistant, she is amazing. She wanted to work full-time. I don't have full-time work for her. And so I just told her, I'll pay you full-time and then you can just work whatever jobs I need for you to do. And so it probably amounts to like 15 hours a week that she ends up working for me on average, but I pay her the full-time rate. So you can do that as well and you can work with them. But anyway, I just wanted to put that in there for anybody who might be interested um, that that is available to you as a business owner if that's something that's more inside of your price range. So let's talk about this. When you when you hire him, obviously he didn't have any experience in the TPT world. What did you have him do? What, what were you having him do for your store? Yeah. So a lot of things. <laughs> so first of all, I just wanted to say on that note of what we were saying about onlinejobs.ph, I knew for me personally, like the idea of hiring someone in the U.S. for, like you said, like 20 to $30 an hour was just absolutely not going to happen for me. And when I heard the range and how reasonable and affordable it would be to hire someone from onlinejobs.ph, the way I thought about it was kind of like a a gain slash benefit, cost benefit, I don't know, <laughs> where I would think, well, if I hired someone on for even just 10 hours a week, and let's say it, theoretically I was paying them $5 an hour, that's $50 a week. And for yeah. me as an online teacher, I make about $80 on average an hour. And so I just, for me, it was like, okay, well, I could hire someone on and I could add one hour onto my schedule every week that would, you know, that would even out and I, I would be able to afford it, you know, and bring that on. And for me to hire someone on for 10 hours and for me to work one extra hour, like it was just such a no, no brainer, brainer, you know? Yeah. So absolutely. I just knew it would help me grow so much faster. But yeah. yeah. So, but to answer your question, when I first hired him on, we did a lot of kind of building SOPs at first. So standard operating procedures. I wouldn't go into that too much. Basically, I just filmed some videos for him using a tool called Loom, which is when you screen record on your computer. And I walked him through how I usually go about things. And then I kind of sent them off to him and, you know, would see how he would approach that and then give him feedback and whatnot. So it was a little complicated in the, in the beginning, just because, like I said, I was brand new to TPT. So I really didn't know anything about TPT. So the very first person that I hired actually was from Fiverr and she was like a TPT specific VM. And to be honest, her cost was just around the same, maybe a little bit more. She maybe charged like seven to $10 an hour, but she knew TPT. She was a seller herself. So she was able to kind of package my products up. She was able to create those first few listings for me and to get my store started. And so then I could kind of observe and like see what she did. And then I was able to use that to give to him to say, you know, this is what we're going to do, you know, use this as basically a template. And then, you know, going forward, yeah. we can do that on his own. Awesome. Okay. So this is really cool because there are all kinds of things that a virtual assistant can do for you. And, and I do the exact same thing with mine. We screen record, lots of screen recordings going back and yes. forth. So then you can always refer back to it, keep everything in a folder so that, God forbid something ever happen. And, you know, I have to find somebody else that everything's already there. So I love that. And then, but let's talk about where do you think your store would be right now if you didn't have somebody helping you complete all of those tasks? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, it probably wouldn't exist at all. It's been a year now and it's, it was an awesome year for us. I've been able to see kind of the potential that's there with TPT. So going forward, I'm really excited. Like we're going to invest more time and energy because to be honest, this was kind of like a side part of my business. This year, we weren't necessarily putting all of our time and effort. We kind of batched like twice this year and put up like 50 to 60 products and then left it. But that's also what's so nice about TPT. But like I said, yeah, it wouldn't even exist. I also would have much less products, of course. He does everything for me from, I mean, I usually make one product and we use it as a template and then I kind of explain what I want and he continues to create the rest of my products. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. And then I just go back and kind of audit it and look through things and change things, especially if it's minor things like change this font to this font or change, you know, change all these photos, you know, I don't know, but he's able to do a lot of that for me. He also creates all of the covers and previews. I, of course, have like a template that he follows, but he creates all of those for me. He does the uploading for me, the descriptions, all of that. And especially now I actually joined RTA with Lauren about a month ago and I even gave him access to RTA. And so he's able to go in, learn things for me and use like the templates that she provides even too. 
to revamp things, to update things now that we're like investing more time and energy into it as well. And so he's able to go off and learn things if I don't have the time to do it or just if I don't want to take the time to explain it, you know? Yeah, exactly. He's able to do that on his own. Or, yeah, it probably wouldn't exist. Without. Yeah, exactly. And this is actually like, you're not the only person who does that. I can't remember who the other person is, but there's someone else who actually has their assistant go in and watch the modules and like take notes and take that back to the team as you, as it work and discuss like, oh, hey, I think maybe we need to make these tweaks and these changes over here, which is really awesome because that's usually not something that you can do with a VA, like, hey, I'm going to pay you to go take this course, but it's really awesome when you can. So what does he, so now he does covers, previews for you, and he takes care of the upload process, all of that. Let's talk about how that's freed you up. What has that allowed you to focus on that you wouldn't be able to focus on if you were having to do those things? Yeah, definitely. So to be honest, my answer is probably different than a lot of sellers because it's allowed me to focus on other parts of my business, like outside yeah. of just TPT. And it's helped me focus on out school. I actually have an organization on out school where I like hire on other teachers. So that, of course, is like super time consuming. So I'm able to, you know, focus on them, focus on my own students. I'm, I'm able to like work less. Also, of course, I try to take off, you know, I try to do like a four day work week most weeks. So I try to add on an hour, like I said, to make up the cost of his like weekly salary. But yeah, right. it gives me more time to myself to spend with my you know, partner, to spend with my friends and not have to work all the time. But of course, it's also allowed me to explore other ways like we're getting ready to start to do marketing, like explore Pinterest and all of th those things, which I definitely, of course, wouldn't have had time for on my own. Yeah. So does he still work for you just 10 to 15 hours a week or does he work full time now? So he actually works full time. When I first hired him on, we started at 30 hours a week and now he's at 40 hours a week and he's been working with me for over a year now. And we have an amazing relationship. He like, yeah, we have an amazing relationship. We honestly, we also never have meetings very often at all. Like maybe once a quarter we have meetings. We talk through WhatsApp, we talk through Loom, and that's pretty much it. And he does his work on his own time. He, you know, gives the report to me each day saying what he completed. He has, you know, paid vacation days, all the things. But yeah, he's he's full time with me. So he, yes, does TPT. But of course, to be honest, there aren't necessarily 40 hours a week that we need for TPT. Yeah. There are right now because we're going back and updating things. And so that's like our main focus. But most weeks, it's probably you know, maybe 10 hours on TPT, 10 hours on, you know, helping me with my YouTube stuff because I have a YouTube channel and also maybe 10 hours working on coaching stuff. Like there's a lot of aspects that I have to my business. So it's kind of just like one part of it. Um, yeah, but he, he stays busy <laughs> for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So what would you say are the drawbacks to hiring a virtual assistant in the very beginning stages of your TPT business? Because if someone's listening and they're in the early stages and they're like, you know what, this really does sound amazing. It sounds like I would be able to get more products in my store faster, hopefully get it to where it's being profitable a whole lot quicker. What are some drawbacks that they should know about? Yeah, that's a great question. I would say for me, the biggest one, I, mean, I can be a bit of a perfectionist and a bit of a control freak. And so in the beginning, you either need to spend more time training someone to do things the way that you really want them to you know, be done, which can take a lot of time and a lot of energy. And it can also be kind of frustrating sometimes because if you've never hired out before, it's a process of learning how to explain what you want, you know, and explain how to do something because you might just be like, I don't know, it's just the way I do it, you know? So it does take a lot of time and energy to train someone to do it. Or it also, on the flip side of that, you either need to do that or you also need to just like kind of let go of control and let maybe things not be exactly what you want and be okay with that, if that makes yeah. sense. So like when I first hired the first woman who set up my store for me, who like was a TPT seller herself, maybe the design of things wouldn't have been the way that I would have done them, but at least it was done. You know, it's like yeah. done is better than perfect kind of a thing. So just mm -hmm. letting go of that, um, that control can be really hard for a lot of people. So yeah, it takes a lot of time to train or letting go of that control. And of course, also, I mean, it is an investment. So that can be a little bit scary of, you know, am I going to be able to earn this back? Am I going to be able to, you know, earn this back multiple times over? But really, that's like a mindset piece of, you know, how much do you believe in yourself and your business? And how serious are you about this? And how much of a priority is it to you to, you know, continue to learn and make adjustments and figure it out along the way, you know? To Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I want to go back to something that you were kind of 
talking about earlier when you said that you hired this lady in the beginning who did know a little bit about TPT because she had her own store. And so she was able to kind of help you get set up on probably some of the things that you didn't really know as well. And then you kind of followed her templates after that with your current VA. And I want to make a note of that because I think that's probably really important for somebody who's listening, especially if you're brand new. If you don't know what you're doing, the one thing that you probably don't want to do is throw money at the problem rather than learning how to actually do it. So if you don't know how to make a good cover, you either need to learn how to do it yourself or you need to hire somebody who does know how to make a good cover before paying someone to create something that's not good. That would be the only, that would be the only concern that I would have starting out is that if you're hiring somebody to do work and it's not good, of no fault of their own, but just because you don't know how to do it, then it probably won't pay off for you. If you're just putting stuff up, like, yes, done is better than perfect, 1,000%. But there's also some forms of done that are just not going to be profitable. So which, yeah, um, true. for sure, for sure, make sure you know what you're doing. And so I love that you were able to hire someone in the very beginning who didn't know what they were doing and then kind of transfer some of that knowledge over as you continue to, and the knowledge that you were acquiring as you were continuing to learn and grow as well. Yeah. So can you share a little bit about what your hiring process looked like? How did you know who to choose? Obviously, we talked about you found the first one on Fiverr and you found the second one on onlinejobs.ph. How did you how did you go about finding the right person? Yeah, definitely. So the Fiverr one is a little more casual. I won't necessarily talk a ton about that. I really just right. searched TPT VA and I was like pretty much like what you said. To be honest, I was kind of throwing money at the problem, but she turned out to be good. So I was lucky. But when I did that, that was just before I went through a program to learn how to hire a virtual assistant on online jobs at Peach. And the process that I went through is pretty complex, actually, because I know a lot of people can go to online jobs at PH and it's hard for them to find someone that's going to stick with them long term. And I wanted someone that would stick with me like for years and really be like a partner for me and like a right hand man kind of thing. And so I went through a pretty lengthy process. You don't have to do this, but it's just it's the way that I found someone that was like really a perfect match for me. So what I did was I posted a job posting and I got a lot of applicants and then I asked questions like, you know, what's your experience like? What would you charge? You know, all of those kind of questions. Based on that, people that kind of lined up with what I wanted, I sent them a like test project. So for someone looking for like a TPT VA, I would probably send something related to making TPT products. Like maybe you give them a template and see what the, like see what a cover might look like. And so after that test, that test project, I had a smaller number, of course, of people that I thought would be a good fit. And from there, I think the next step was I took them into an interview. So I did interviews with probably five to seven different people. And that was pretty clear to the three people-ish that I thought would be a better fit. And then I took those three into like a week of trial. So I actually did a week, all three of them to see kind of how they worked. And I picked my favorite from there. And there were really two people in the end that I was like, oh, I love these and I have to like pick one of the two. But the fact that mine was like a musician was pretty much like right. the, the game changer for me. So I ended up hiring him on. So do you have to do as like lengthy of a process? Not necessarily, but some sort of like trial projects, trial, you know, working sessions with you just to see because those can really show, you know, how like yes. detail oriented they are, how they take charge, you know, on projects or how they communicate with you, you know, stuff like that. So it definitely was very eye-opening, the process, but it worked well. So, Yes. So I've gone through similar processes before where I, I hire curriculum. So I have curriculum writers. They're in the U.S. They're teachers. And then I have my virtual assistant. And when I was doing the VA process, I went straight to the two-week trial because I loved yeah. her. And I was like, I read her profile and she was a, she was a former math teacher. Like she that actually had her, I know it was perfect. And so it's like, pretty, pretty please, you know, would you like to come and work for me? And it ended up being a really good fit. I lucked out on the very first try, but I did do a two-week trial. But with the curriculum writing, it was a very similar thing. And I think that, you know, especially if you're going to have somebody that's doing a big project for you, or they're going to be doing something that requires a lot of attention to detail or requires them to think on their feet, if it's, especially if it's any kind of product creation or writing or anything like that, that has to do with your product itself, something that you're 
customer is going to be using. And I think it's really important to thoroughly vet that. And so part of the application process is for them to actually write problems for me. And then with very little instruction, it's like, here are some standards that I need problems modeled after. And I want these problems to be rigorous. I want four rigorous problems based off of this standard. And you can tell really quickly who is phoning it in, you know? And so just being able to kind of see a sample of their work and what they're going to be turning in and you're not having to pay for that sample. So they actually have to really want the job, you know? But you also get to see turnaround time, like how long did it take them to Mm -hmm. fill out that application? You ask them, how long did it take you to write those four problems to get an idea of how quick they are? And then after that, I give them a paid sample. Like, okay, from this point forward, like I want you, I'm going to pay you for the sample, but we're going to look at a larger sample of your work. And that has worked out really well for me. I have three of the most amazing curriculum writers that there are. But yeah, the process is a lot. And, but I think though that doing that at the very beginning, doing that at early on, you don't end up having to fire anybody, right? Initially. Because it is like, it's an investment of your time and it can be an in, like a pretty, you know, hefty investment of your money too, if you're like paying multiple p- people to do the same job to test them out. But like you said, it's like, it's, if you don't, it's like putting a bandaid on a solution. Like I, it's so much better to really invest that in the beginning and find someone that's going to stick with you. And then it's like, yeah, you don't want to have to repeat the process over and over, you know, no. to find someone in the, in the future. Like you want someone that's going to stick with you and you don't have to continue to retrain people. Like, yeah. So it's definitely yeah. hard to do something extensive in the beginning. And that's hard because I definitely, I would not have been able to do any of those things you just named. So that's <laughs> like a very smart way. To well, yeah, but it makes sense though, because like, especially if you're going to have somebody writing music or whatever, then right. you want to, you want to see what their style is. You want to see what, exactly. and I, did, I think I've listened to podcasts about people hiring before. And so I had, none of that was my own idea, but I had listened and heard other people talk about going through the hiring process. And I just knew I wouldn't have the heart to fire anybody. And so I would just keep paying yeah. somebody for awful work if I didn't do it right. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. Me too. Yeah. If that's yeah. Nothing, so, that's so yeah. So what would you say to someone who really wants to hire out, but finances are the obstacle for them? But like they're, they're looking at it and they're going, okay, I'm making this much money on teachers, pay teachers. It would cost me this much to hire out. And they feel like that this is the right move for their business. They feel like that it would really help them take their business to the next level or really free them up mentally, emotionally, you know, take a lot off of their plate or free them up to focus on other areas of their business. But it's the financial part of it. That's kind of a sticking point for them. What would you say to them? You know, I think everybody's, you know, situation is different. For me, it's like, I don't have children. I don't, you know, necessarily have a family that I need to allot my money to. Like I am one person running my business and my business is like pretty high on my priority list, you know? And so for me, it was a no brainer, but to be honest, it can be kind of more of a mindset thing. I know this sounds a little bit woo woo, but for me, like, I know that the absolute best investment that I can make and in anything in this world is in myself. Like, I know that if I invest money into growing something myself that like I'm going to earn it back tenfold or it's going to be a learning experience that I will, you know, some some way down the line be able to see that money come back. And that is something that is an adjustment, I guess, to get your mind in that kind of a place. But if it truly is like a numbers thing that you really have to figure out, I would just say to like set a plan for yourself of, once I'm making this much money, I can invest this much as well. Or think of it like a percentage. Like if you're making, you know, $500 on TPT, you could outsource for 10% of that. You know, you could do $50 a month or, you know, 20% or 30% of that, whatever is more comfortable for you. But I feel like it just really depends because, you know, how much you're relying on the money that is coming in. But of course, it is like an opportunity cost because it can, like we said, really grow your store quickly. So to be able to earn that money back down the line, as long as you have them working on like truly money making tasks, like creating products or, you know, trying to make your current products more profitable, like it, it will come back to you. But like I said before, like one way to think about it can be, you know, if there is a way to earn extra money on the side to make up for that cost, like I, for me and my the amount that I earn per hour teaching online is about $80 an hour. And so to hire, to add one, one extra hour to my own schedule to make up for the time that you could hire someone on, it it can help with that mindset a little bit. And just Mm -hmm. knowing that like, 
I don't know, it can be a bit of a mindset shift of, am I not willing to outsource something for four to $8 an hour? Like, do, do you not think your own time is worth four to $8 an hour? Like that really is a mindset conversation, you know? So yeah. getting past that first hurdle, I think is kind of the biggest thing. So I guess just like kind of analyzing how important this is to you and, you know, when that might be a realistic chance for you to, to take it. But I definitely encourage anyone to do it as soon as they can. Yeah. Okay. So I love two, I love everything that you said about that, but two things in particular stood out to me. Number one, when you were talking about setting aside that money each month. And I think that, yes, absolutely. Like we, some of us really, really, I mean, I've TPT and all of my businesses, obviously that is my income. Like I'm not teaching anymore, but I know that a lot of us rely on the TPT income, even if you're still in the classroom. But if you can take five to 10% of what you're earning and you can put it back, this doesn't have to be something that where you, you constantly have a VA. It can be something where you set the money back, you save up for it. And then, you know, once or twice a year, you hire out a specific set of tasks that are going to help you move forward in your business. The second thing that I love is when you said, as long as you're hiring them to do a money-making task. And I think that that is really important too, where when I talk to people a lot of times and they're talking about hiring their VA to do something, they're talking about hiring a VA to do something that isn't working for them. It's like, okay, well, I need to keep up with social media, even though social media isn't working for me. So I'm just going to hire someone to do social media for me. And at that point, like you're not, that's money that you're not going to get back. That's time that you're going to get back. Like you will have that time. You'll be freed up from that time. But at the same time, it might be better for you to just drop the tasks that aren't making you money and hire somebody to do something that is making you money. So when we're talking about hiring out, I think it's really, really important to remember that you only want to hire for areas of your business that are actually bringing in revenue. So you don't want to hire somebody to write your emails if your email marketing isn't bringing in any revenue. If you have 50, 60, even 500 people on your email list and it's not making you money, you don't really want to hire somebody to write emails for you. Same thing for social media, like I said earlier. Focus on hiring somebody to help you do the things that are actually making you money and then that's going to make you more money. So I love that you mentioned that because I think that that is really, really important. Yeah. So what's next for you and your VA for in your business? Yeah, right now we haven't, like I said, we hadn't put a lot of time and energy into TPT this year. So we're, I just hit one year, like last month on TPT. So honestly, we're going all in and focusing a lot on the store. We're updating everything. Like I said, I just joined your membership a month or so ago. And so we've learned a lot. So we're going back and updating everything now that it's been a year and we want to build it up, add more products in, start doing email marketing and start exploring Pinterest, maybe. Those are kind of the goals going forward. So yeah. That's kind nice. of what's next in our, in our goals. That's, that's super exciting. They're going to do some fun questions real quick. These are just okay. our little lightning round, just some fun that aren't necessarily business related. But let's start with this one. What, what are your favorite podcasts? What podcasts are you listening to? I am a sucker for Jenna Kutcher. Amanda Colby is a past coach that I've had. Hers is awesome. I love yours also, Rebranded Teacher. Those are probably my three favorite. Awesome. Favorite way to relax? Mm, that's a good one. Glass of wine and Netflix and my partner. Yeah, just chilling. On awesome. Couch. Awesome. And so what are you watching? What are you binge watching on Netflix? If I'm not watching something new, then The Office is, which yeah. it's like the holiday season. So I'm always watching like the holiday episodes. But we're the new one that we're watching now is 1899. It just came out on Netflix. Oh, uh, yeah. And The Sex Lives of College Girls. <laughs> that one, not the <laughs> HBO, but a new season just came out. Well, there you go. Last question. You get two tickets anywhere in the world. Where are you going? Who are you taking with you? Two tickets anywhere. That's such a hard question because I love travel. Somewhere in Southeast Asia, I would probably say, I know it's really cliche, but probably Thailand. Thailand. My boyfriend. My boyfriend. Awesome. Yeah, of course. If you said anybody else, then he'd probably be upset about that. Yeah. (laughs) Wonderful. Well, thanks so much, Katie, for coming on today and for sharing your experience. I think that there are so many people who will really enjoy hearing that. And and 
hearing that it's worth it in the beginning to have a virtual assistant, to have somebody to help you do some of those mundane tasks so that you can get your store up and running a lot faster. So I thank you for coming on and sharing. And where can listeners find you if they want to connect with you? They can find me on Instagram. It's Katie Gettys, G-E-T-T-Y-S with an underscore at the end or on YouTube as well. Also my name, Katie Gettys. Awesome. And I'll have links to those, both of those two down in the description. Thanks so much for coming on today. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. I really hope you enjoyed that conversation with Katie. I knew I had so much fun talking to her. If you're like me and your ears perked up when she was talking about her out school career, you can learn more about that by checking out her Instagram. You'll find a link to that down in the description. She shares all kinds of tips on how to run a successful out school store. After we finished our podcast interview, I asked her some questions about this because I know I have people all the time who are like, I'm ready to get out. I'm ready to get out of the classroom, but I don't make enough on TPT. And so she and I had a really great chat about that. And if you would like for her to come back on the podcast and talk about that, send me a message. You can find me on Instagram as well at the Lauren Fulton, or you can find me inside of our free rebranded teacher Facebook group, which is linked down below. Katie is an RTA member. And so if you are interested in learning more and growing more inside of RTA, just like her, you can find the link to join Rebranded Teacher Academy inside of the description. And if you use that link to purchase, then some of those proceeds will go to Katie as a way of saying thank you for coming and sharing her wisdom and knowledge on the podcast today. Now, this coming week, TPT is supposed to be releasing some updated guidelines for TPT search. And so on the podcast this next week, I'm going to be talking about those, how they differ from guidelines that we had before and everything that you need to know about those guidelines. So I'll see you right here next week.